what was the biggest challenge when going against Caleb in practice? Um, really just his mobility in the pocket. Um, trying to contain him. Um, he makes his reads, and then he, he he's able to move around. Uh, he's not a statue in there. So just trying to contain him and stay level. Like like as a, a D line, we try to even up the rush lanes. Sometimes with a guy like that, you you think you got him in a spot where where you can make it, and he he's able to uh, get out of there. So trying to contain him in that, in that pocket. Trevon, we've heard uh, your get off is better this year, and it seems like a just a twitchy instinct thing. So how do you work on that? How do you get better at get off? Uh, we work it every day. Uh, we do get off. That's the first thing. Uh, as a unit uh, in a D line group, we we go get off. So just working it. Um, and Ken, like um, I talked to like a lot of people and asked, hey, what are you Ken here during the off season? And just now I'm Ken some of the right things. And um, so uh, I see see some move and I'm going. All right, you came back to camp in great shape. Coaches clearly testing y'all with that the defensive line, having y'all go a lot of reps in a row. When you talk about the fundamentals and the discipline things like pad level, eye discipline, whatever, when you when you play with good pad level and stuff, you've been able to dominate. And then sometimes you still get kind of straight up a little bit. Right. What's the key to kind of keeping that focus and that discipline? Is it more physical with the with the exhaustion, or is it a more of a mental thing? Yeah, it's more mental. I think um, sometimes when you got a taller guy, bigger guy, you sometimes you it's a, it's a habit just to kind of uh, still get up and then uh, it's uh, for me. Um, sometimes I win reps and I'm and I'm high. So uh, having to tell myself, it's like you said, it's mental. Having to tell myself, like you you you'll make a lot of more plays with your pad level low, striking with hands and, and, and getting off the ball. So um, that's how it's supposed to look. So I have to tell myself that's what I need to do. How much pride are you taking uh, batting up passes? You've been doing it throughout training camp. Is that a special skill? Is it like a natural thing that's always come to you? Oh uh, yeah, I think it's natural. I'm uh, I got long arms. I'm a bigger, taller guy. So um, if 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 there's a situation where I can't get all the way to the quarterback and get that sack, um, you got to get your hands up and uh, get some tip passes, and um, those turn to turnovers, and that's that's what we want as a defense. So just get my hands up on some of those uh, passes. Ron, when you go in the one on ones against the offensive line, who would you say has been a good challenge for you that's made you better as you kind of continued this? Um, I think we we got a group of guards. I think all of our our, our guards as as um uh, I think as a as at the three I, um it's so many different like everybody's different. It's not just one guard that that does the same thing. So um trying to um trying to get here get get to a spot and learn a guy. So but I think uh Pryor has get given me some good work. Nate Davis um when he was out there, he was giving me great work. So um all of those guys are I've I've gotten some good work. I line up on the left so I haven't uh gotten to go uh too much against Tevin, but uh when I'm over there we get good work as well. Can you talk about how, how different maybe you feel right now to say a year ago when you were a rookie just trying to Get yourself off the ground to what what it's like for you now. Yeah, I feel way different, man. Almost a, a totally different player just because I I know what to expect now. I know the playbook. I know where, what what it's supposed to look like. I know um, where I'm supposed to be um, when I finish a play. So um, I feel totally different. Montez, I think, said that it feels like you're about to pop something above. Do you, do you feel the same? Way? I do. Yeah, I do. Has it been more of a mental thing that's that's made it easier for you this year as compared to last? Uh, I think I think it's everything. Changing my body around, being able to physically uh, play play more, um, and then mentally, like I said, I think when you know what you're supposed to do, when you know uh, the playbook, you can play faster. Uh, so it's a little bit of everything. Did you, did you have to change your diet? Did that, was there a move there too? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I changed my diet around a little bit. Yeah. Any, any, any specifics there that you could share? I just. Like I said, I think I said it last time. I put down the, the, the snacks at the end of the night, and I um, I eat a little leaner. Um, so, yeah. Javon, did you watch Hard Knocks last night? My wife did. Yeah, I heard it a little what bit. Did, what did she say? She liked it, yeah. Did, she, she, like, yes. did, you, did you see any of it that you felt like, yeah, that's really accurate of how we are as a team, or, or how did you feel about being in that spotlight? Like, Yeah, I think it was super accurate. I think um, – this this year, um, it's it's uh, we have a leader. We have like leaders in the room. So I think they did a good job uh, with it. Jervon, with the batted passes, was that something you were able to do a lot in college, or do you feel like you've actively gotten better? I think I've actively gotten better. I think in college, uh, for me, sometimes when uh, I think it was uh, if I didn't get a sack, then um, it, the play was over. Uh, now I know with Coach Washington and Coach Trav, they they preach a lot. Get your hands up. Bat some uh, bat the ball. So I think now 
um, it's, 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 it has come in my head that, okay, if I'm not there, I need to get my hands up. Or if I'm the splitter rush guy and I'm at the point where um, I'm right in front of the quarterback, I need to get my hands up. Jermon, when uh, Demarcus Walker gets that kind of sack towards the end of practice, and then, I mean, get really, really fired up right. about it. Uh, I guess what's going through your head when you're watching that all transpire? Yeah, I love it. I think Demarcus is a uh, – he plays with a lot of passion energetic and you need a guy like that um he's a he's a guy who like you can feed off his energy um so when i see that yeah i love it if, if the mark is when i win so and practice is not fully last but sometimes it's kind of hard to tell what actually would have happened but it kind of looked like today because you got that good get off you were able to shoot the gap but then it created a backside lane for kind of deandre to cut through how do you go about kind of finding that balance between when you can shoot it and when you kind of got to hold up your integrity? Um, it just depends. If it's an overreach um, and I can tag it, then I'm going to tag it. Um, so it just it's my key. My key will take me to the ball. Sometimes if, uh, like you said, um, it, 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 we have, we play overlapping defense. So if I'm tagging it down uh, my nose, I'm creating a gap for my nose to overlap and make a play. Just in uh, evaluating these practices from you know, like a media standpoint, it looks like even going back to the OTAs, that the defense has gotten the better of the offense in most of these. Do you guys look at it like that too? Do you guys feel like you guys have been dominating? I'm a, I'm, a def, I'm a defensive guy. I'm gonna say yeah every time. So yeah, I think so. Yeah. Following up on that, when you when you face a guy like Caleb who can obviously move around a lot in the pocket and make some different kinds of throws, what's been your perspective on Caleb, the quarterback, and just kind of defending that, knowing the throws he can make, knowing his running and even running and, and feeling out the pocket a little bit too. Right, yeah. So, like I said, we just we, we try to contain him. Uh, he's a he's a talented quarterback. He can make every throw. So, um, if if we was probably we would have to game plan against a guy like that. Um, and um, that's what you want, right? Uh, so, um, as a defensive line, we try to run games, text, exits, all of those different types of games to uh, get out on the edge or or just win your one on ones to try to you know what I'm saying uh, slow him down a little bit. Do you feel like you you want to play a lot in the preseason to see where you're at? Or yeah, you? I do for sure. Yeah, I need the reps. I'm still a young guy, so I need the reps. Uh, uh, you get better with repetition for sure. Jamal, do you got a sense of like how <coughs> how important you are to what this defense is? You look around, you see all the different players around you, all the playmakers at all these different levels. And you talk about being that three tech as the engine of this defense. Do you have a real sense of like? how critical it is for you to be a difference maker in this defense? 100 percent yeah. I think uh like you said, it's the the not only the three technique, but the defensive line is the, the the engine is the heart of the team, um honestly. So um I understand the importance of you know what I'm saying being there and being able to dominate there. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. What's going on? What's up? Great. Say the uh the defense is winning camp still. I mean, it seems like every time we walk off the field, it's like the defense outplayed the offense. You guys looking at it like that? Um, I mean, not not really. I think you know we're gonna always look at it as a competition, just because that's how we that's how we operate. Um, but we're we're very critical when things are when things are wrong. You know, when we when they beat us, um, we're critical of it. We want to hold ourselves to that standard to get it fixed. But you know, that's a good offense, man. So it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a battle every single day. But that's that's how we like it. But in terms of score and all that, I mean, we'll we'll talk some crap to them mid, you know, mid practice. But after that, it's kind of just how we can get better from it. What do you see from the offense that makes you say that's that's a good offense? Yeah, I mean, I think you can just tell that they're getting more more confident in terms of like how they're operating. Um, and also, I think you know the run game has looked really solid just with all the, you know, with all the movement and things that we do. I think they they've done a good job of handling that and, and you know found some answers for it. But um, you know, there's just dynamic players everywhere, right? And it's it's you know it's hard to get a, a great matchup everywhere. At the end of the day, you got to win you know one on ones in this league, and um, you know they definitely have a high chance of, of doing that for sure. Do you notice that Caleb's getting better? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to think that we're all getting better. Um, but again, you know, his the throws that you know he makes kind of out of the pocket, and um, some of the ones in those critical situations that we practice that he makes is, you know, as a defense when you're out there, you hate to see it, and then you you know look back at film, and you're like, all right, that's, that's a pretty good ball. Like, well, we're we're happy to see that. But um, no, I think as a whole, you know, we're doing a good job of just, you know, we're in the grind of camp right now. We showed up, you know, a week early, obviously, and um, but there's no. You know, there's no quit and kind of morale or anything like that. And I think that's kind of what we're, we're taking from it right now. TJ, do you guys have the goal of making it tough for Caleb in the offense? I know you're on the other line or on the other side of the ball, but how do you observe Caleb 
kind of responding to those challenges and the and the, the times of frustration? Yeah, I mean, again, I think, you know, I've said it from day one, I think he's just himself, right? And I think, um, you know, he's learning just like we're learning, you know, a bunch every single day. And um, with him being, you know, the, the leader of that group, the, in command of that group, um, it's going to take some time to kind of get everything down. But he's, he's taking it in stride just like we all are. Um, and, again, every day they're kind of putting in something new, you know, new, a new pass concept or something to keep us on our toes. But you see them executing it well. So you can tell that um, they're doing a good job of putting it from, you know, the classroom and paper to the field. So and that's, that's what you want. DJ, y'all defense not, like, super complex, more predicated on being able to play fast, knowing your assignments, getting downhill. I was just talking to Javon, though, about some of the complexities in terms of his ability or flexibility to jump this gap and then have to be replaced either by a linebacker or by the nose. Yeah. How's that process coming in terms of you guys kind of being able to read the same thing, see the same thing, play mm -hmm. through one set of eyes from that first level to the second? Yeah, I mean, and I can just kind of speak to, you know, my comfort of being in it this year, you know, compared to the first year. I feel like, you know, when I first got here, it took me a second. I'm like, what is, what's going on right now? But, um, you know, I think just having comfort, one with the guys up front and kind of understanding of, of what we're doing. But, man, the way that they're they're um, playing with just tenacity has been – it's really popped out. And Dex has been um, every day showing up with that same kind of mindset. But it's, it's definitely a defense where you're playing off of one another, reading off one another, and – um, kind of reacting in that way, and it, it lets us play fast for sure. Can you speak to just the ability for him to one want to penetrate, but also kind of keep you clean. He's got that dual responsibility, mm -hmm. keeping y'all clean, but also penetrating. Mm -hmm. What's that like? How, how does he go about that, and how do you prefer to see it? Yeah, I mean, for me, like I'm, I'm more of a a guy who no matter what happens up front, as long as it's done fast and. Um, it's done deliberately, I'm, I can play off it no matter what. Um, and that's kind of what we tell them at their position. You know, again, like there's going to be times where they got to help us and we got to help them, right? It's kind of that relationship. And at the end of the day, whatever they do, you know, we got to be able to, to read off that. And like I said, man, as long as they're, they're big dudes, they're fast, they're athletic, and um, as long as they do what they do, we'll be, we'll be fine playing off them. As long as they wreak havoc, we're good. Obviously, Jack, what's the DeAndre Swift? What's the challenge in covering him when he gets out in space? Yeah, he's – um. I mean, he's damn near a receiver, right? Like, it's uh, it, it's really good for us, though. You know, I think um, just coming off of last year, that's something we wanted to improve on. And, and again, we do one-on-ones every day we're in pads. So being able to go against him and, and Herb and, um, you know, Roshan and all those guys, you know, I think it's, it's a really good group, but it really helps us. You know, he's, he's dynamic, he's quick, and um, he can he has really good hands, too. So he makes it, he makes it tough on you, for sure. He, um playing without four or five starters in practice now at this point, similar to last year. Mm. And it was, I think at least some players felt like that was part of the reason for the slow start. Any reason why it will be different uh, this year? Do you feel the same without you know, having that full complement as, as we head into the meat part of camp? Yeah, I mean, you know, football is, is, is a game with a 100% injury rate, right? Like it's, it's one of those to where um, you know, guys are going to get beat up and, and things like that happen. But... Um, again, I think just with guys who've been in the system for a while now, kind of truly understanding it and understanding um, how everything is supposed to look. You know, I think guys are going to go down, but we have we got guys who are ready to go, ready to fill in. And um, when those guys get back, we'll be we'll welcome them, welcome them when they get back. But um, it's kind of something you just really can't control. And you know, I think it's it's easy to kind of look back at last year, but we're just focused on what we can do now for sure. Sorry. Obviously, Dex looks a lot different in terms of his body type and yeah. transformation, but playing behind him. Is there anything else you notice that looks different, whether it's his get off, his confidence in year two for him? Yeah, um, I I notice, you know, I'm I'm six one with cleats. You know what I'm saying? I notice I can't see the quarterback at times when Dex is, is rushing in front of me, but um, no, I think again, you just see the confidence that he's playing with, and um, I think that group's a really good group. They're a close group, right? And they they all lean on each other. They all they all work really hard, and. Um, but again, I think he's just been confident in what he's doing. You you can really feel it, right? He wants to he wants to make his presence known, and um, even just with batting the ball down this year, he's he stood out in camp. You know, every single day, it feels like he's batting a couple passes down, and that's that's huge. That's where turnovers come. So um, he's definitely you know showed up, ready to go. Are you able to tell early when he's too high? He was saying you know something like when he's low, he's down. Mm -hmm. He said himself like because he's so tall, he sometimes a little habits to stand up. Are you able to tell right behind him sometimes? That he's just a little too high and needs to get down with it. I mean, like pre snap. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's hard to tell. You know, I think again, that's a big dude, right? So it's it's hard to it's hard to ask him to you know play low all the time. I'm sure. You know. Um. But again, I think as long as he can do whatever he does with with tenacity and um get his job done, man, I'm good with whatever it looks like. To be honest with you. Jay, how ways do you see Eric Washington's fingerprints on the defense this year? Yeah. 
Um, I mean, again, I think the way he's he's kind of come in, and I feel like uh, Coach Wash is a guy who who demands you know kind of respect, and he'll give his as well. You know, he'll give his to others, and um, but he's been just transparent with us from the start, right? And I think that's that's big time. I think it's something that you know we we really appreciate as as men in general. And um, he's come in and, and took in like taking the reins of the group and um, kind of giving us the keys in a way too. You know what I'm saying? But I thought he's done a great job of just kind of handling everything and, and organizing everything and making sure that we know, um, you know, he's got our back and things like that. So he's been great for us, really. Did you, did you watch Hard <laughs> I did not. I'm not going to lie. I get home about 8.30, 8.45, and I'm I'm good from there. I'm going to sleep. So um, I'm sure it was great. I'm sure it was a lot of Caleb and all that, but it was uh, – um, I'm sure it was it, – it's good for the people to see. It is. Kind of a stone. Yeah, for sure. I uh, I did know that uh, Theo was going to be on there, um, so I ha I saw the highlight of that just because I had to see the reactions. Um, one of the more wild things that I've seen in my time in the NFL, but <laughs> but um, that's what it's about, right? And uh, it's, it's 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 great for people to see. Honestly, I don't know about that part. Of great people to see, but um, it's cool. It is. You just had enough football the other day. Is that? I'm I'm just surprised that you didn't. Um, I mean, I, I, I will. I think eventually I'll tune in and things like that. But um, for right now, it's like, you know, I'm focusing on, I know what time I got to get up in the morning and I know what time uh, things are going to be happening. And I know I got to, you know, go cover Keenan and DJ the next day. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get to sleep and, and let me let the guys tell me what happened on that for sure. Did you, did you ever have to do one of those rookie talent shows? I did. I did. Um, wasn't anything like that. I know that. <laughs> uh, I sang Buy You a Drink by T-Pain, and it was, like, probably the worst thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. But <laughs> got it done with, and it was good to go, for sure. Was there any talk about Flus the linebacker in the linebacker's room today? Was there any talk about what? Flus the linebacker. There were some clips of Flus playing in Toledo. Was it really? Yeah. He's told us some uh, some stories, for sure. We can't tell if we, like, believe him or not. So now <laughs> I, might, I might have to tune in. Um, I might have to tune in and see what's going on. I'm sure he's eating that up, but I'm, we'll probably see in the team meeting here in a bit, so we'll see. Oh, the collar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's we call that a one gap linebacker. <laughs> downhill, downhill for sure. Appreciate you guys. Harold, how weird was it to uh, be standing all by yourself uh, kicking a ball off in an NFL game like that? <laughs> It was weird. It's very different. Uh, we've been rapping a lot during practice, so it, it uh, some uh, we're used to that feeling. But it def definitely feel like, especially like, cause we usually are in the huddle on the sideline with the high tower, and you know, going over which, which direction we're gonna kick and all that. But now that happens down at the forty yard line, and he tells me beforehand, so you know I don't get to break break with the team. Um, but it, it was good feeling the timing of everything and. Uh, uh, and just how the play is going to go down. Um, but like I say, it, it, it's, it feels a lot more normal than it did back in the, in the spring. Tyro, I think after that kick, you, you went to Canton because it was the first one after. <laughs> what, what's that feeling like? <laughs> it was cool. It was, uh, you know, I got, I, years ago um, when I was with the Chiefs, I got to, we played on Thursday, the opening night of week one, and I got to have the first kickoff to open the regular season. So now having the first kickoff to open the, a full a full season, uh, something really cool. I'll I'll carry those memories and uh, I walked around the day before the game in the Hall of Fame. We toured and I uh, took a picture of uh, Lou Groza, uh, the statue, the, his bust, and uh, and uh, Morton Anderson, uh, Jan Stenerud, who, who I enjoyed talking to a lot when I was in Kansas City. And, and it was cool. It definitely makes you dream. Took a picture of Vinatieri's jerseys and like his cleats that he broke records, uh, you know. And got to listen to um, Devin Hester uh, talk to us uh, during that tour and just how you know there's so many few guys that get uh, the opportunity to you know call your, call themselves Hall of Famers and and seeing the emotions in his in his voice and his eyes uh, is something that you know I think he gave me a little motivation to you know just keep. Attacking one day at a time, one year at a time, and at the end of the day, you know, having that opportunity like Devin has, and if I get to do it, it's gonna be um, something that I don't think I ever had those dreams. Uh, you know, it, like I said, just you just want to do the small things, and hopefully, all the rest take takes care of themselves. Yeah. Arrow, just to clear something up, are you gonna be able to go to that NFL Brazil game, or is it too close to the start of the season, the Friday Sunday? 
Yeah, too close. I'm, I'm too scared to even ask Coach Flues. Uh, you know, <laughs> the game's on a Friday, so uh, I would have to miss a practice or two, and there's just no way that that's possible. But uh, I'll be watching it since it's at night. You know, most international games that we've seen in London and Germany, all that, they happen so early in the morning that we're usually getting ready to play a game here in the, in the States. But since that was the only game going on, I'll, I'll definitely be tuning in. And uh, and got a chance to go down there this summer, shoot some stuff with the NFL, uh, prepping for it, uh, telling my story, how, you know, growing up in Sao Paulo. Uh, so just being able to experience that was something that, uh, you know, I'm not going to be a present in that game, but uh, it was something that allowed me to be a part of uh, this, uh, this historical day for Brazil. Disappointed? Yeah, I'm disappointed that we weren't chosen, but obviously, you know, I don't know what the criteria is. Uh, but I do think the NFL uh, did a great job putting two uh, fan bases that are huge in Brazil. I follow them. I've followed them for for ten ten plus years now, and and the Packers and the and the Eagles do have a big. Uh, fan base, so I think um, they nailed as far as like creating a, a great matchup for what the country uh, would love to 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 go watch. How comfortable are you with the new holder with with Tori, and what's like the process like? Is it a big adjustment? Is it a small one? Yeah, kind of just it's small. I think uh, holders are so well taught nowadays, and and have a great understanding of like the different. Um, desires of, of different kickers like and the leans and the, the spin and the and all that their body position so uh, much like Trent Gill uh, a few years ago it was just took took one day to just see like oh he's got it it's gonna be comfortable and um, and, and he's just so like he just he's, he just loves to get better every day like he just um, you know I, there's there's many times that I I make a kick and then he's just like, dang, I think I missed the spot. It's like, no, like it, it's fine. Like, don't be so picky. Uh, we'll, we'll, you know, it's our job, Scales and I, to make you right. Uh, and, and you know, when Scales might not have a great snap, like I need you to save it, and then I'll save and make Scales right. Um, so that's that's kind of how we operate, just to make ourselves uh, better. Um, you talked about doing the small things right, but speaking of the bigger things, what are your personal aspirations or goals headed into this season? Um, yeah, it's hard because I feel like, you know, we play a different game. Like, you know, I, I pl we play a team game and ultimately it is to win and help the team win. And But I feel like there's not many things that are in, uh, in my control, like with, you know, the offense and defense and all that. So um, as long as I can just focus on, on doing my job when my number gets called, um, th that'll help the outcome of the game, however it plays out. And obviously I if I have opportunities to decide the game, um, I'm always you know, wishing those for those moments to happen because you know it's something that I prep for, and and, and I want to feel like I'm helping the team. So, um, just help the team win, and, and that's really the only thing that I, I really care about from week to week. Yeah. Back to the uh, kickoff rule, are you ready or prepared to have to tackle more possibly? Yeah, there's there's I think what I've, what I've seen I think uh, the. The likelihood of a return of breaking that, the, you know, that line of a, uh, of our of our coverage guys is I think is bigger. He's getting more speed from where he kicks the ball or he catches the ball, um, and it's going to be tough tackles I think when when they're kind of running at full speed at you. Uh, before when we could pin guys in the corner, using hang time, uh, played to our advantage, played into my advantage, kind of um, trying to, you know close the gap and make him go to the sideline and using the sideline to tackle. But I think there's going to be more opportunities for an open field tackle, which I um, can't say that I've done many, but I'm going to definitely try in the safest way that I can. Do you prepare for that in any way, differently? We've been doing uh, tackling, like sweeping the ankles uh, tackles and like wrapping the legs and stuff. And I, that's, I think, the best chance that we can bring him down uh, without getting hurt, you know, obviously. Shoulder to shoulder, I'm not going to win. Uh, putting my head in there, not healthy. So, uh, just kind of putting myself in those situations when we practice it, and I'm running, chasing our returners. I try to visualize that, just aiming at the legs, and or maybe coming at an angle and sweeping the ankle. Did you have to work out differently in the off season? I know the Bears post an Instagram post, <laughs> like 100 pound dumbbells. But is there anything that you had to do differently training wise? 
prepare yourself for that? No, I, I, I didn't. I just always try to get stronger and then uh, put on more lean mass every every year. Uh, but I didn't really do it with the purpose of, um, of, of getting bigger and making tackles because uh, I think the technique is just something that I don't really have because I don't have a lot of experience tackling. So just finding, getting more reps at that, visualizing at that impact well, point, yeah. <laughs> I've I've watched a lot of tackling uh, techniques, but I just can't like it's like putting yourself when especially when the guy's running super fast at you, it's hard to like you know, you know kind of picture the move that you're gonna use, uh, and, and they're so good at making you miss too. So like you know, and and that's what happens most of the time. Like they pretend they go no one way it cut you, and then you don't even have a chance uh, at, at making the tackle. So it's just something that. I think when you're not used to doing it, it just you don't really know how to react in that situation. Yeah. What were the big things that everybody was talking about today on Knox last night? Was there any themes or things that your teammates found surprising or interesting? I haven't heard anything uh, just because how I think the routine, like we don't have a meeting before practice. Like everybody comes in at, at their own time uh, and um, starts their prepping for practice. Uh, so I, it, it we don't see each other, at least when I go in the cafeteria, there's very few people. When I go in the tubs, there's few, few people. So, uh, yeah, I watched it last night. Um, I thought the conversation between uh, Coach Flues and Nick Saban was uh, very cool to listen to. Guys, uh, you know, I admire Coach Flues a lot as a, as a person. I don't know Coach Saban a lot, uh, but obviously, you know, everybody knows how uh, how his career, how, you know, how decorated his career is. So. Just, and I know Coach Saban is a mentor for Coach Flues, so uh, seeing kind of where the his Coach Flues wisdom comes from uh, and how much he pays attention to that, it's like uh, it's really cool to see that moment. Um, and, you know, wish I could get an hour of that conversation. Uh, and, and, but I, that's the part I think I like the most. A couple more. They showed the clip of uh, Flues in college. Did you had you seen any of that? No, before? I hadn't. And yeah, he can hit. <laughs> Maybe he can teach you how to tackle. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, but yeah, it was it was cool because I hadn't seen. I knew he, obviously he played at Toledo and with Coach Saban, but uh, and and he's uh, you know we've got a great defense here. But seeing how he was, it's like yeah, man, like that's the style I think I would love to have. Yeah, yeah, because I don't imagine him tackling a lot right now. But <laughs> years uh, years ago, uh, it's cool to see how athletic and big he was. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks.